as a parent, there are nine things you should never say to your child when he or she is experiencing depression. Hello, my name is Kwame Frimpon. I am a marriage and family therapist and associate licensed professional counselor in the state of Georgia. This channel is all about relationship improvement, marriage and mental health. Every week we produce new videos. If you are here for the first time, please consider subscribing to our channel and leave your notification on so that you can you know get our weekly videos every single time follow us on instagram like our facebook and share this platform with people uh, and thank you so very much so today we are talking about nine things you should never say to uh, your child if your child is experiencing depression there is uh, a statistics about the struggles that parents go through when it, when it comes to children's depression. Number one is 40% of parents, 40% say that it is difficult to tell the normal up and downs from depression when it comes to their children. To really know whether, oh, you know, 12 years old, puberty, 13, 14, is just being a child, being a teenager. But, but how do you differentiate between that up and downs and real depressive clinical depression symptoms? It's not, 40% says it's difficult. Number two, 30% says that youth is, at, youth is good at hiding feelings. So, so they, they hide it. They, they, are not, they, they, they don't tell their parents what they're actually dealing with. Um, and then 14% they say they don't talk about, you know, feelings that much in their homes. They really don't discuss it. So it doesn't come to the surface. 7% says they don't spend much time with their youth. They simply don't. And then 4% says they don't, they're not sure what are the signs of depression or what signs of depression ah so you can tell how difficult it is now as a parent if you're a parent like i you can just you know agree with me that parenting by itself is not always fun it's rewarding but it has its challenges especially if you are if you're in a different culture it's very difficult then if you are dealing with depressive symptoms in the family it even complicate matters but there is a lot of solution out there solutions but there are things that you can do and things that you cannot do in my next episode i'll talk about the things you must do to help the situation but here are nine things that ditch the label it's a company that have put together that as a parent you shouldn't say these things to your child if he or she is experiencing depression. Number one, it says, snap out of it. You know, when you say snap out of it, um, depression is very complicated thing. And just saying that to your child doesn't help. In fact, it can even send a wrong signal that you don't really care. That you just want quick, you know, quick fix. Just, just snap at it and go, just everything, everybody's fine. Why? How come you are the only one, you know? When you keep saying that, you are not providing a place for your child to come home and express how they feel. Because really, we want them to come home and tell us. If we, they don't, it keeps going deeper. And it's like somebody who is, who is in a hole. You are in the underground and you are in a hole. And rather than getting out, your way of getting out is you keep going deeper. Some things they hear, some things a depressive person hear would take them further down the hole. So snap out of it comes across as you don't care, comes across as like, you, you, you know, you don't have time for that. And that there's no time. Just get over it. You know, and we wish as a clinician that it's that easy. It's not quite easy like that. You know, so uh, try 
instead to say, so how can I help you? What can I do? You know, and in my next episode, I'm going to share more about the right approach. Number two, you hear people saying, you've got nothing to be depressed about. You know, I, I am from Africa. And some of my African parents say, I don't understand why this youth, all that they, they care for is that they are depressed. They don't pay their bills. They don't clean the house. They don't do all that you need to do is to go to school and you are depressed. Somebody have to pay a bill before they get depressed. What has depression got to do with age? It's just depression. It doesn't matter your age. <laughs> it really doesn't matter your age. People are getting cancer at the age of four, two. And depression is no different. People get sick. Really, people get sick. So to think that somebody doesn't have a job, so they, they shouldn't be, they shouldn't get depressed. We need to change that. So you've got nothing to be depressed about. Doesn't help either. So that's a second way you you want to stay away from because once you do that, you are not helping your child to understand, uh, to know that um, solution is out there. Number three, I, you 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 can you can agree with me. You hear this a, a lot. Aren't you being a bit dramatic? You're too dramatic. Do, so, do you want your child to express himself, to express herself? And I know that sometimes it's hard for us as parents because we are doing too much and we have two jobs and three jobs and four jobs and you come home and you are tired and your child doesn't have to do anything and tell you I'm depressed. What do I do? You know, because depression, these are psychological, physical, and social symptoms of depression. And it affects the person in many ways. And to hear on top of what I'm dealing with, that I can't study, and my own loved ones are telling me that I'm being too a bit dramatic, will shut me down. What we don't want to see happen is that they shut down. Because if they keep all these things inside is going to kill them it's, it's 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 rough no you really want them to talk you want them to express it number four this is another huge one that that i like you as a parent listen to me now it's just in your head it's just in your head they say it is a mental disorder, so depression lies within our brains. But by saying it's just in your head, it means that it's something trivial which can be controlled. Please get it out. Get it, get it out. It's just in your head. So the, sometimes I ask parents, what are you trying to tell them? When you say that, what are you really trying to communicate to them? Are you frustrated? Are you confused? Or you think they are just acting it out? Depression is real. Number five. Boys hear this a lot. Man up. Man up. You are just, you, 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 just grow up. You know, you, man up. With suicide being the biggest killer of men under 40, this is probably one of the most toxic things you can say to a guy, and it's not cool. Man up. When, when, when a person is dying on the inside, and you hear that you are not doing much, you are not, you are not pulling your weight, it even makes it harder. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you did the very best you can, and yet, People feel like you haven't done much. And they said, man up. You know, um, don't don't be weak. Get over it. Just be strong. <laughs> it's like, you see, mental is in the mind. It's not a physical thing. So I can say it's spiritual. And to think you can be physical thin and handle it like that, um, May, may make it worse. 
Number six, you don't look sick. You don't look sick. Depression is an invincible illness. You can't always see it from the outside. But that doesn't mean that it is not there. Depression is an invincible illness. You don't have to feel weak. You don't have to to like something else that makes you tired or although sometimes it makes you tired. But, but it's very possible that there will not be any physical symptoms to, to look at to determine whether or not a person is sick. So if you tell somebody don't look sick, I mean, I have, I know some people who had cancer that they didn't, nothing outward, there was no evidence. In fact, if you, if you were to do brain scan, um, some sicknesses start 30 years, dementia, for example, start 30 years before it manifests. And that's, you don't see anything on the outside, but the day it manifests is too late. How about that? So mental health start and it's very possible. Often you don't see anything physical to as an evidence of what is happening. Number seven, it says, maybe you just need to make some changes. So you are again, you know, giving advice that maybe you just need to make some changes. Because it comes at, at, across as nobody hears me, nobody listens, and people don't understand what I'm dealing with. Number eight, you are being a bit selfish. It's all about you. Despite the severity of this disorder, too many people still don't quite get it. Depression is not a choice and there is no on or off switch. It is not a choice. You are being a bit selfish. These things complicate things. It shut people down. It Put, it make them die in silence. Number nine, you are being so ungrateful. We have provided you school. We have provided you education. We have provided you a place to stay. We have bought you a car. We have done this. We have done that. And yet, very true. As a parent, I know. We, we, we go several miles to do all this. But why do they get depressed? So out of our frustration, we say things like, you are being so ungrateful. We are all affected by things differently. When depression hits, it is difficult to see the silver lining. That doesn't mean that gratitude and depression can't coexist. In the Bible, people got depressed. Paul got depressed. He was an adult. He got depressed. And um, he got through that. And he was grateful. But just telling people they are not grateful, that's why they are going to depress. Of course, ungratefulness can cause some depression. But when you are dealing with clinical depression, it's a whole another animal. I hope these nine things will help you to stay away uh, from making things complicated. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel. Follow us, like us, and share this with your friends and your families. And thank you so very much for watching.